Today I want to take a look at Power Apps Canvas and how to use a timer within a button click. So let's say we have a button click that runs MS Flow, maybe needs to move some files, copy some files, it's going to take a few seconds for processing. If we execute our button click, we may need a way of delay before we refresh the gallery. And we'll just go through this one step at a time, but we'll do button timer. Button click timer will be the name of our app. So in this sort of scenario, you're going to click a button, have it perform a heavy operation that may take more time to process and then come back in a few seconds. We can give the user experience a countdown like five, four, three, two, one, and then the gallery refreshes. This is a way of providing the user some detail while the heavy background operation processes. So let's say we have a Canvas application and also a document library. We can come over here and create a new data source connection over to SharePoint. We put in the URL of our demo site, make a connection, open up the document library, bring that into the application, and potentially add in a control like a vertical gallery. Yes and use documents, there we go. Modify the fields, and we could show things like, maybe not title, but full path, there it is. All right, great. So here we have a gallery showing documents from our SharePoint site. And maybe we want to add a button with a timer click. So the button click should have a timer, and the reason for that is the processing may take longer before we want to call back and refresh the gallery. So this could be like move files, right? And that's the user experience that we're trying to invoke. And in doing such a thing, you wanna go ahead and have the on select invoke the flow. So over here, we can add a create new flow within our app. So we've got a button, we've got a gallery, we're adding a flow. The flow is gonna take a little time to process. So here we're gonna say, yep, just like that. And we'll open up operations. We'll look for SharePoint with files. And maybe this is move a file. There you go. Excellent, excellent. The current site address. File identifier to move. We can ask inside of Power Apps, the destination site and the destination folder. So for that, I have documents as part of the default. Maybe over here I can add a new document library for the destination. And we can go ahead and create two libraries moving from the default documents into destinations, source and target. So destination site address can be the same. Destination folder. There it is, we'll use the folder picker. If the file is already there, then we replace it. So something like this where we're executing a file move operation. Now if these files are large, it's gonna take a little while to execute. And that's that's part of the, the nature of such a, a, a heavy operation in a button click. So the user experience, if you click the button, it's gonna take it a while. We don't wanna instantly refresh the gallery because what'll happen is that we're gonna refresh and see them on the source. We're not gonna see them on the destination yet, right? So if this is our source, we can do text label here. Come on down. Yes, we'll make source. Eh, maybe bold, a little bit larger on the fonts. And then with something like that, we can bring another label to this side and do destination. Yes. And we can do the same thing with bringing the gallery control. So here we can insert another vertical gallery bring it over to this side. And for a data source, um, I mean, that's currently pointed at documents, which is the data source we have existing. We wanna add a new one. We're gonna use the same SharePoint connection, same site actually, but this time we're gonna go ahead and pick out destination. So destination to the right, slightly different on our source. We'll go ahead and connect, good. And in changing the fields, we can bring in full path. That's right. Yes. And we'll change the 
There we go. So currently we don't have anything in destination. We have three items on source and a move files button. Now what we want to do with an operation like this, typically you're going to do the on select and you can go ahead and do the power apps move file run and then feed it in one of the specific files that we're looking to move. And this could come from our gallery control. So we'll come on down here, gallery one. And I'll come back over to the flow, do a modification. All right, so when we click our button, we're going to do for all of the items in the gallery. So the more items we have and the larger they are, the longer this is going to take to execute. And then we run the move file operation feeding in the record ID. So with something like this, we're now ready to add the timer control. But I wanted to give that background as what the use case might look like. Now for the timer control, we're going to set this at 5,000 milliseconds. So that's five seconds. We're going to do a fill color, change it from the default, something like dark gray. Yes. And when the button is clicked, we're going to set a variable in progress true. And that's going to mark globally. Yes. And then when the timer ends, this is going to be on timer end. We're going to set the variable in progress to false. All right, so as part of that, things are running. Time to go back to the other side. Okay, and then the display mode of the button is going to be if in progress, display mode edit, otherwise display mode edit, and the first one be disabled, right? So we're going to disable it if it's in progress. Yes. All right. We'll go ahead and check that out. Yes. And for the apps on start, we want to initialize the on start for the app, or we set the in progress default. So it's a way of resetting it for the app overall. So when the app begins, the button will be available. It will disable itself, execute the operation, and turn on the timer. And to invoke the timer control, we have a couple of different things we need to do. So I want to come down here and say invoke timer, or start the timer, start timer control. So here we're going to update context, and we're going to set timer 1 faults, reset timer one, and set timer one to true. This series of steps will go ahead and invoke the timer and begin the countdown for the five seconds. Over on the timer itself, we have the on timer end, which is what it needs to do for setting and progress to faults. And you know, usually with something like this, I mean, that, what that's gonna do is enable the button, right? That's gonna enable the button for the future usage. But here's where we want to actually do our delayed data refresh. So delayed refresh of gallery controls. So here we're going to refresh documents, which was one of our data sources. Yes. And we're going to refresh destination, which was our other. Delayed data connection refresh gallery controls. So this is the real key that we're trying to do at the end of the five seconds. So it's the on timer end, this is the delayed operation, and this is enabling the button control again. So with all of those things in place, we can go ahead and give it a test. So here we'll go ahead and play the app. We'll click our move files button. It disables while processing. One final component we're going to need to add onto our timer is the start property to give it a variable for tracking. So here we're going to give it a name, TMR timer1. And that context variable can be used for setting and starting the timer. So we'll come over here, TMR timer1, false, true. There we go. So this context variable, TMR timer one, is our control point. And this is how we're going to start the timer. 
and TMR timer one is a variable that pairs over to the timer's start property. So the start property becomes this global variable, and that's how we're going to track the update context to be able to apply and invoke the timer. Uh, so we'll go ahead and run the on start for the app. And we'll save and bring this one here. And now we can invoke move files. We see our timer counting. One, two, three, four, five. So here when we click the move files button, we'll see the timer count for five seconds and refresh. There's the timer counting for five seconds. And now we can see our files are showing on the right hand side in destination after our five second timer completed. And in this particular build, I'm showing the timer always. You could make this show only while it's in progress. So is the same part of the in progress property that we're using for disabling the button over here on the display mode. We could take that same formula, bring it into timer, make it part of if it's in progress, then we're true for visible. If it's not in progress, we're false for visible. And at that point, the button will only appear when we're actively running the timer. So the timer appears when it's counting, but you're not going to see the timer when it's in its normal state. This is probably a better user experience for the move files button only shows the timer when it's actively counting. And then the refresh can happen in a delay. So again, our goal is to execute a heavy operation, such as an MS flow moving files, could be 10 files, could be 50 files, they could be 100K, they could be 100 meg. It may take a while. So by delaying the button click, that gives us the ability to refresh later and provide the best user experience. Thanks for watching.